The most basic thing you need to know is the JS syntax. There's three ways to declare a variable in JavaScript. The first one is a constant variable, written this way, a name, Marco. This variable is immutable. This means that it cannot be changed. So if I try here, I name another thing. I receive a error here in my console saying that I cannot assign my name because it's a constant. Now, this is the most used type of variables in JavaScript, although it cannot be changed. There are some tricks that you can actually change the values in this case, and it happens when you're using a object in area. So if I choose user and now name it Marco, although I cannot change my complete user object, I can change the, the properties of this object, and in this scenario, it will be valid. Console here, user. My name was actually updated to this other name. The other type of variable is a var variable. This was supposed to be the default variable in JavaScript. You can use the exact same way as the constant. The difference is that variable in this case can be changed anywhere. This variable is more like a global variable. What I mean when I say global variable is that if this variable here is set in, in this context outside a function, for example, function, I can still access this variable here. There is another way to declare a variable in JavaScript that is using let's exactly the same way as normal variables in JavaScript. So let's see, the usage is the same one. Also, you can write from many ways in JavaScript. The standard one is by using the function syntax, but you can also use a thing called a arrow function. So let me show. This is, as I showed before, the default way to declare a function, arco. And if I execute my name here, get the result console, as you can see, this is a normal function in JavaScript. As I said, you can use another way called arrow function that basically here in this scenario, you set the value of a variable to a function executor. If I use a const, for example, and my name, and I'll use this my executor, return Marco, the, the function behavior will be exactly the same as I showed before. Returning my name here and works exactly the same as expected in a normal function. JavaScript code does not have any kind of line break validations. This information will be more useful in my next examples, but this means you can write a complete code in just one line without any line breaks, separating the commands by a semicolon character. For example, let me write code here that will say a greeting to me, username Marco, a username, then as you can see, my code was successfully executed here with my greetings. And also, as you can see in this example, there are several ways that I can use to declare a string in JavaScript. The common one is to use a single quote, as used here in the username, but you can also use the same behavior by using a double quote. For example, name Marco will be exactly the same. The big difference is that I can also use an accent here to declare a string. And the best usage for this string with accents is that we can concatenate variables by using this other syntax here. And as you can see in my result, the string hey was concatenated with my username that I was set in here before. Also talking about accents, we can execute functions using accents either. For example, if I get a console log here, test, my function is executed, but I can the same function by using an accent. And as you can see, it's also executed here. This works with every single function in JavaScript. This can be really useful while you're trying to bypass some kind of WAF validations, for example, to execute your alert in JavaScript. And after watching this video, you will achieve the next level in your bug hunting and you'll be able to better the bug codes and also create better POCs to your attacks. For those who don't know me, my name is Marco. I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast and also a software engineer. In the description of this video, I'll be putting some links to some books that will help me go deep into bug bounty that may help you either. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please make sure to click that subscribe button and let's continue the video. Remember that I said before that JavaScript allows you to write codes in just one line without line breaks. That's a pretty common way that developers use to harden the codes against hackers. But the problem is that this kind of minification can easily be fixed and the codes becomes completely readable again. I'm here on HackerOne and I'll be showing you how you can debug this code and turn it back to the original state. I'll be testing here the sources tab of my developer tools and I'll be looking to a file here called read reports. This is how a minified code actually looks like. As you can see, the complete code written in just one line of codes. If you're a Google Chrome user, you can use this button here below to transform this minified code into a actually readable code again. As you can see, now all the line breaks are being effective and it's way easier to understand what this code is doing. 
you can look in many different files here and the behavior will be exactly the same if i unified my code here you will see that the code is just bad to read you cannot understand very well what's happening but if you click you'll have a better look in what is running behind the scenes the application be in mind that this minification will be many times combined with an obfuscation for example in the hacker one here all the variables are obfuscated they don't have meaningful names and it's really hard to understand what's going on here for this case i recommend you to watch this other video of mine that i published before that i showed how you can bypass this kind of obfuscation in many applications now that you know the basic js syntax it's worth mentioning some security hotspots I like to take a look while debug some application. This spot does not mean that the application is vulnerable, but it's a good start point to start researching. Here are some injection spots. The first method I want to talk about is document.write. This method appends a HTML into it, the current page, and if the developer does not properly sanitize, you'll probably achieve some XSS in scenarios. For example, use the document write h1 hello parents name. As you can see in my website here, uh, my name fire parameters here and append it into the screen using my document right but let me take a look if i try to add a script here for example and execute it as you can see my alert was successfully executed if i take a look in the generated code here i can see that my document write function actually allows me to add scripts and cross-site script the text to its page so i recommend you while debugging javascript to take a look for places that the developer uses this kind of method here uh, another great method we'll take a look it's the eval command the eval basically executes a string as a javascript code so let's imagine a similar scenario here that but in this case i'll be getting the, my, my name parameter here and using to pop a alert i'll use my parents get name here to execute uh let me take a look again to my example when i open here my alert is being triggered with my name so let's imagine a scenario that i close this here now i close my parentheses that is this parentheses and now i can as i said write codes just one line using javascript so we, i put a semicolon here and now i will be putting another alert function with a document dot dom dot cookies get my cookie and then i'll be adding a console log then when i executed my function as you can see the first alert was the one that was closed it was my alert with my name but if i click ok document dot cookie actually ok now another alert that was not supposed to be being triggered is triggered with my cookies in my page so an attacker can use this to uh, append his own malicious code to a eval page that will help and extract the data. Also, there are some good points that you can look at the redirection spots. The redirection spots can be really useful to find open redirects, but when you talk about JavaScript redirects, uh, you can also use a method called a JavaScript URI that I explained it way better in this other video of mine, but this means that you can actually execute JavaScript code using a JavaScript alert, for example like this way there's two redirection points that's maybe worth looking for it's for example document.location yes and my parents get url this will be my vulnerable code here so if i parallel if yes google.com for example i suppose it should redirect my user to the google this is a common open redirect but as i said in javascript you can use this other syntax when talking about javascript open redirection to execute javascript in the context of the page as you can see i put here document domain document domain the url that's being that, that is triggering their code it's the my website url here and also you can get the exact behavior by using method window.open passing my parents here the difference from window.open is that my javascript secured a new tab context but as you can see it's also executed in my domain context as I showed here, getting my, my document on my website. Keep in mind that JavaScript is a client-side language, and this should be your focus while debugging with JS code. And if you're interested in learning more about client-side vulnerabilities, I recommend you to continue watching this other video about XSS. See ya!